Oh, hey, good morning. <laughs> Sorry, starting our event, I see. Um, good morning, welcome to 30 Question Thursday. And let's see, we have some of our regulars on this morning. Hey, everybody. So everybody who's on live, if you have questions, if you could drop them in the questions tab. Otherwise, on the chat tab, there's a lot of people who come here and know each other and do a lot of great sharings. So, hey everybody, Australia, the UK, Connecticut, Denver, Canada, right on. All right, so let's see. I do not think that we have any questions here on the questions tab. I know today I'm excited for the end here to do some energy work with you guys, share some some new things, a new thing that we're doing, um, unplugging and plugging ourselves into a different space. And I'd love to talk about that and go through that whole process here with you guys when we're done. Um, Let's see. So, um, hope you guys are all doing good. It's been interesting for a lot of different people, that's for sure. We'll get into more of that when we talk about the energy work here today. So let's see, we have a question from JR. Why are the pyramids made into 60 degrees while the Giza pyramids are 51 to 52? So every pyramid angle, so all the pyramids in Giza in Egypt all have a very slight different angle to them. And it is this angle right here. And so the Giza pyramids, um, you know, like the Great Pyramid, it is one, well, they're all together working, holding a grid system, the physical third density reality, they are holding that in place for this planet. That's what those pyramids are doing. Um, we first started working with the 60 degree pyramid with the Bosnian pyramids, but the Bosnian, the largest Bosnian pyramid is actually a five-sided pyramid. And there's only two angles that are 60 degrees. But our previous ascension chamber um, that sits down for some reason, we felt we had to make that at a 60 degree angle. So that's where it first started to come in um, to our awareness of using the 60 degree angle. And then found that there was the two angles in the Bosnian pyramids when we were making our first ascension chamber, which we were just basically trying to replicate the energetics of the Bosnian pyramid complex, which we did. Um, and we did that with that 60 degree angle pyramid. But then, even that grid system, it is uh, that particular grid system of the Bosnian pyramids, unlike the Egyptian pyramids where it's connected to this earth grid system, the Bosnian pyramid complex is connected to interplanetary interdimensional grids. It's uh, the only grid point of the Bosnian pyramid complex is in Bosnia. And then we have one here at the studio with our that original 60 degree pyramid that's permanent permanently in the studio. But then um, we were finding that even that um, grid system was still a little bit limiting. It wasn't exactly, you know, it was phenomenal because we used the Bosnian pyramid complex and the ancient earth technology that is there, the ancient builder technology made out of stone in the Bosnian pyramid complex is some higher dimensional technology that's just phenomenal. And so we still utilize the energetics of the Bosnian pyramid complex once in a while, but it's this new, um, the 60 degree pyramids that we started creating after the original, we're creating a whole new grid system, which we call the Ascension grid. And so all the 60 degree pyramids we make, whether they are the, the quantum grid point, um, the little quantum grid point, or the Ascension grid point, um, with the coil in it or the regular ascension pyramids of all the different sizes. These are all 60 degrees and are connecting to each other, forming their own grid system, which we call, we just call it the ascension grid. Um, 
So yeah, the 60 degree pyramid angles are holding our particular grid system in place and it is a much higher energy than what the Egyptian pyramids are because they're holding third density physical reality in place and it, it is more than the Bosnian pyramids. Um, so anyway, that's the 60 degree pyramid. Linda, I, ha I have three allergy injections a month which are causing swelling and pains. Is there a wand or ring I can use to help alleviate these symptoms? So yes, Linda, basically it, it's using your consciousness work as well. It is doing the energy work with what it is that's being injected. So you can use any of the tools. You can use the wand. You can use um, you can use a ring. You know, taking the golden fire and light dowsing rod, and it is the wand too. It runs energy, so you can run energy with the wands, the rods, any of the wands. Dragon wand. Or you can use a ring basically what we want to do Linda is when you go in to get your injection maybe sit in the car first before you go in and imagine being in that space so you go into the heart space you imagine being in the office and they bring out that vial for the injection or the syringe imagine running energy to that whether it is imagining that that vial or that syringe being within the column of the ring imagine it being inside of a ring or imagine that you are holding it and that you are running energy into it with a wand either way that you are utilizing the tool for your attention to run energy into it all these tools are quantum tools this energy field exists beyond time and space so we can when we're in the heart space utilize these energy fields so again let's say you have this giant vial of vitamins that you're going to take imagine before you go to the doctor's office holding it in your hand imagine it being within the ring then when you're in the doctor's office um, you know when whenever like my daughter when she was an infant and she had to have you know some kind of medical stuff from the from the doctors i would always make sure that i had it in my hand and that i would run energy into it and that's what i would do so if your doctors are cool you can ask them if you can run energy into it just be in your heart space you can use a ring if you want you don't have to and just run energy into it if that is not a possibility then after you've had your injection of your allergy meds you can also go to the injection site, use your wand directly on the injection site, or use your ring directly on the injection site. And when you do that, it's just being in the heart space, having the intention that the energetics of the wand or of the ring or running through your hands, however it is, that that energy is going into um, and harmonizing all of those meds. So that is the base thing for your intention is harmonizing. Um, harmonizing is a great word to use because then not only is, is, is the energetic concept phenomenal, but it also helps us with our mind. So we're not seeing it as something bad or negative. We're just going to harmonize it. We're going to take and make all the good parts of it better and any of the parts of it that may be non-beneficial, we're just transforming. So harmonizing. Um, so whatever is within your realm of possibilities to do there, whether it is beforehand, during, after, any of those times, um, all three would be best. Bryson, any unpolished rings Wi-Fi for... Oh, aha. Hey, Bryson, I need to get a hold of you. I think I have an email from you about um, asking about rings for orgone gifting. And yes, Bryson, actually, I do have some rings um, that were some second hands that, um, you know, I have, we got a box full of those things were maybe 
like a Wi-Fi ring didn't get matched up right and there's just no way to fix it. So yes, I do have some of those rings for you, Bryson. Um, so I will connect with you on email. Um, any updates on Disclosure Fest? So on the Disclosure Fest that we're doing, we're building that pyramid. Um, we're actually going to have to go 27 feet tall instead of 37 feet tall on this giant copper pyramid just for the fact that there's going to be a giant tapestry that's hung on the back of this for that stage. So um, we're working on that. And actually, we're getting in the car and leaving in less than a week to head out to L.A. for the Disclosure Fest. So <laughs> we're running low on pyramid building time. Linda, when we put the grid points in a river, is it important that they stay upright? How far is the effect? Um, no, so when you use the quantum grid points and you are gifting them to the water or to the Grand Canyon or whatever, um, the pyramids don't have to be upright at all. And they're going to expand, that field expands to about the size of a home, um, you know, like an average size home, is about how large the immediate field expands. But with the grid points, there's a thousand lines of light that are going out that point because they are connecting to all other grid points. So when you have a grid point, it's not only just, um, you know, it's not only just the field around it, it is connecting to all other grid points. So there's just, it's, it's almost like it's a sunshine. Um, coming out of there and those so those lines are pretty phenomenal they're a 14 inch wide line um, just a golden fiery wall that comes out of there and so it's going out in in all directions so when you gift your grid point to the river you can just drop it in um, but of course you know you have your intention too you can put your intention into it when you're doing it to you know for whatever it is for you know, whatever your purpose for dropping it in the river is, helping with the wildlife, helping with the water, etc. Um, Leon, can you explain how the rings create orm with the water and if it is as potent as white concentrate? So when I've talked about how the tensor rings create ormus in the drinking water, orbitally restructured, monoatomic, I don't know, ormus. Um, or orm. So when Dancing with Water has has looked at that and they've done the the research on it, basically when you are using purified water, it does not work as well. You need minerals. You need um, you need other molecules within the water because that's really where that spin rate is coming from is the other molecules within the water. It's not necessarily the H2O that is creating that high spin rate. It is the rest of the molecules within the water that is creating that high spin rate that in a lab, it makes water lighter in weight because of that high spin rate that it puts it on. Now there are other, because usually Ormus uh, that you get, if it's a liquid, They'll use salt, and so salt, like dead sea salt, whatever it is, they it is the salt content. Um, everything within the, that salt that is spinning so fast, and that's where the ormus that you buy as a liquid ormus comes. And so those have a lot higher concentrate of minerals within the water, so it will be a lot more that that ormus that you would buy in a bottle now you can do the research and add extra minerals to your water um if you yeah so if you use mineral water that's why i love el dorado water it's spring water it's not purified so it has some minerals in it um naturally occurring and um so if you work with your water and you're really wanting to create that ormus add other minerals to the water and that will that will definitely help um i'm going to turn off the sound so you guys don't hear all the beeping in the background there from the questions coming in um so yeah i, I hope that ex 
explains a little bit about the, the ORMS. Um, Jennifer, I have a client that has gotten the quantum grid point to protect her from spirits coming into the house. However, the spirits are not detaching prior to entering the house. Do they need to be more specific on where this is placed for protection? So, um, with the quantum grid points and using those for crossing over ghost way words, when you set the quantum grid point into the space, have that intention with the grid point that that is what you want it to do, is that you want it to connect every ghost wayward that comes into the space, connect them to their soul and have their soul take them home. So if you set that intention into that grid point when you place it in your client's place, that it is just um, connecting with that ghost, that wayward, connecting them to their soul so their soul will take them home. And so if you use that extra intention, um, because that space that's held with the grid point, if they're ready to go, they'll go. They'll have the exit right there. But if they're not ready to go, then the grid points aren't going to, um, on their own, not force them to go, but force their connection with their soul so that they'll go. Um, that's just, you'll just have to put that intention in there to help any of those who are not necessarily wanting to go. Um, Samson, what's the difference in the collar rings from the chalice versus a harmonizer ring? I've been wearing the harmonizer and it's been next level and helped me bless every bottle of H2O. <laughs> yeah, Samson, thanks for the H2O. Um, so, The, there was a chalice ring, I believe, that um, that I might have given you, Samson, here in the beginning. It was a heavier-duty one. Um, and then we started making the harmonizer ring for, for a neck ring. But the I would say use the harmonizer ring, the one that we, that we actually produce, because um, the harmonizer ring in all reality it is the divine i am it is the harmonizer it is the chalice they are all together within there and um pretty much the divine i am is found in a layer of every one of the tools now that we create and really that is the most potent to to use with the water um would be the divine i am which these harmonizer rings carry that so that that's what I would suggest. Samson is um, the harmonizer ring for sure. Uh, Leon, do you notice any energy when electroplating tools? I know slim embedded frequencies when plating. You know, uh, no. I well, there to me there is like an extra little field of energy on. Like when we when I plate the wings of talk, so I mean, this is a copper ring, but it gets electroplated copper as well, and this is steel, and it gets electroplated copper. So I do see feel that there's like a fine layer on here that is a little bit different than the rest of the field. But yes, when Slim was doing silver and copper, and he would do like nine layers. Um, it would create that that silver and that copper it's almost like it would create another small field kind of like when they use um, um when they do gans when when somebody torches a cop piece of copper so people that torch a copper ring and they just add that little extra sheathing of energy over the top of the ring um to me that's what the electroplating is doing as well um it's subtle but you know still i still see that the most powerful potency part of the field is in the etheric templates um yes you can embed the frequencies into the crystal structure of the plating solution and the plating itself. But 
really embedding it into the pure copper to me would be just a better way to go because the plating rubs off to um you know overuse especially with jewelry but yeah leon um I can see that there's a different field, but I can't describe what that is or what it's doing. It's just it's just another fine field on on the plating itself. If you're doing just copper, well, like I say, the silver and the copper adds a little bit extra something to it too. Um, Tam, what is the difference between regeneration energy and divine I am energy? So the regeneration rings. Um, the regeneration rings were kind of a a stepping point they were a stepping stone in taking us a little bit higher than where we were before with the golden fire the regeneration took us actually much higher it the regeneration was kind of it was kind of that opening into that whole higher realm of the chalice of the divine I am of all of that um, so the regeneration um, again was just one of the stepping stones and then we got into the chalice which is where that divine I am was the stepping stone between all the older frequencies of tools including the golden fire all the older frequencies the regeneration was the stepping stone into all of this higher stuff which is the divine I am, which is the chalice. The harmonizer is another one of those that's that's a little bit of a higher stepping stone, but it's kind of a intermediary too between that super high space and all the space that we've been accustomed with. So the regeneration has been um, actually the regeneration, everything that we're making in regeneration now is now containing the chalice and the divine I am. The regeneration rings themselves, this qubit has been the one that we were first putting in all the chalice and all of the divine I am into, which we can now put into any qubit measure. But the regeneration was the first qubit measure that was able to really hold those energies for us. So let's see. All right. Just checking over to see what's going on over here. Um, all right. Questions. Marsha, what tools do you recommend to help heal my broken wrist? You know, if you have something like a HECA class, or any of the bangles or heavier rings, um, that's absolutely perfect. Something that is near and kept near that space for long periods of time. So a wand works great, but with the wand, if you're wanding your wrist, you just have to have the intention that that energy stays there longer than just while you're wanding it so that you're putting this bubble of energy you're feeding this bubble of energy and that it stays there for as long as is needed um, if you're working with a clasp they're a comfortable one that's a phenomenal one of course we have the the new divine i am slash chalice clasps out of silver these are fantastic they're a little bit heavier gauge to me they're a lot more potent than and and potentially powerful than the other clasps were. Um, but any of the clasps would be good for, for working with the, the, your wrist, um, as well as a bangle, as well as I say, like I say, running energy and holding it in there. Linda, do all the earlier tools contain the upgrades also? Yes, yes they do. So basically even the very first 144 megahertz rings that we were creating, you know, 10, 11 years ago, whenever, um, those are all updated as well. So there used to be like the golden fire rings, like that golden fire qubit. We couldn't put that golden fire into like a harmony qubit. 
But with all this newer stuff, the divine I am, the chalice, the chalice was the first to go into all tools. And then that divine I am template is now in all tools that we've created as well. Because um, and that divine I am just comes in as an extra field around it. So your old 144 megahertz ring, let's say that you have laying around from 11 years ago, it is still a 144 megahertz ring, but it now is bringing through also that divine I am and that chalice energy is also present there. Um, JR, would you please tell how you got started in creating these tools? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes. Um, it all started with my sister channeling the Hedica Elemental. And when she channeled in the Elemental of Water, Hedica, um, I spent about a year making these, getting them out in the world, made thousands of these, gifted them all over the world. People were having remembrances with this um, tool. It's what first opened me up to energy, um, you know, to be able to feel energy. And it was the gals at Dancing with Water that wrote us and said, well, you know, your channeled information backs our science and what the Hedica or they call the Triskelion does. And then a couple weeks later, they called and said, well, we're scientists, but there's this guy who sits on our front porch and when we come home from work every day and he's he's deceased but he talks to us about water and about energy and he has messages for you on how to put together tensor rings so i got the messages from slim on how to put together the rings and ever since then it has been a journey of awakening and remembering of creating these higher dimensional tools through lifetimes and um so that's it so yeah I, um it's been a journey but anyway so yeah it, it's just something that in the etheric realm when we first came out with the key pendant um there was this group of beings that called me a master builder and i was like well yeah i could put together a circle and it was because i've been building on the etheric level for all these eons and right now is the time that we are all bringing forth all of those gifts and bringing them into the world and you know and, and the gifts are so varying and it doesn't have to be making a tool and it can be something that you don't even know that's subtle like maybe just you walking in your presence is shifting and changing people's realities all around you so i mean it's just it's those soul level gifts that we you know that we all carry um christine i know the tensor field generators have a large field of influence but are they more potent or do they have a stronger field if they are close like they were set on top of a water container or on your person would they restructure water if close yes yeah, so the tensor field generators the majority of tensor field generators yes it is going to be more potent right there next to the sphere so you can take that sphere you can set it on top of your five gallon water jug or next to your water next to your container um, and it will actually do everything that the rings do when that generator is up close with with your water so thinking of it as a generator is a sun and as all those rays of the sun are exuding out kind of like the quantum grid point where all these rays are exuding out so when you're really close to it it is nothing but a ball of that energy as you get out farther like from the grid point you'll see that the lines start to get wider so that the the field is not as potent right next to it and that is kind of like the generators too in that the generators are shining outwards and they still have that field is still powerful enough in the subtle realms to affect all the subtle energy such as emf dense consciousness things like that but 
affecting the physical it does that field is a little expanded out so yes affecting the physical like water having your generator close um you know the collapsible generators like the harmony generator is a fun one because the harmony generator is one that you can have up in a sphere you can put your intentions into it you can collapse it down and slip it over your water bottle that's a fun one and it will automatically carry the intentions that you put into the generator into your water marcia which one would you recommend to have the quantum healer oh you have the quantum healer and the dragon wand so the depending on the work that you're doing marcia let me see for your wrist i go, go back i was trying to remember what you're working on so for your wrist um using either the quantum healer or the dragon wand now, if you are able to use the quantum healer, because the quantum healer is such a little wand, and so many of so many of us people will see this small little wand and they'll be like, well, you know, there's not much to that. And again, this shows us as being this little in little tiny dragon, but yet it expands to the size of the universe that it is small but it is all powerful um so if your mind will allow you to be able to utilize the quantum healer the quantum healer will be a much more powerful wand because the quantum healer does contain everything that the dragon wand does um so it would be kind of specific for you um if you go into the heart space and you use the dragon wand on your wrist see what you feel see what you feel for anything the pulsing within the wrist or see if you feel any shifts in your perception your awareness your feeling your mental then try the quantum healer and see if you have any shifts to me the quantum healer is much stronger i can feel the quantum healer just as i feel the dragon wand but I feel there's so much more that is taking place there. So the quantum healer really is a phenomenal, phenomenal wand. Um, you just have to make sure that you're in the heart space and that you are allowing this to actually do the work that it is capable of doing. Um, Leon, I've tried running energy into my hand with the quantum healer, but I noticed it was way more with the golden fire and light wand so yes um again working with the quantum healer if you have the intention and the knowing and the trusting that you have the golden fire and light wand it will do the same because you're having the intention of creating that golden fire and light wand only right there but there's like i say there is the golden fire and light wand the dragon wand the shaman wand the fairy wand um are all within this one and you can pick and choose which one of the energies you want to come through but a lot of these energies in the quantum healer are really a subtle energy they are working in so many other different layers that we're not necessarily attuned to that we don't feel in the physical um you know and so that's another thing too is is again the trusting that the work that you do is it's actually working um and that's just kind of been one of the challenges i guess for some people with the the quantum healers but yet there's some people who just pick it up and there's like holy crap and they just run with it um so again it's 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 individual i'd say um let's see all right so see if you guys get any more questions otherwise we're gonna do some some energy work like my shirt service human do not pet it's one of our friends in sioux falls south dakota that has the dirty dogs um dog spa so I like my service human shirt. Okay, guys, we're gonna do some energy work then. Um, 
So there's been some heaviness um, and you know that a lot of people have noted is some heaviness where they just feel like they're just trudging they're um, a lot of people disconnected not having the passion um, or knowing what the heck they're supposed to be doing um, there's been a lot of creating old realities realities i mean creating old stuff so for years lifetimes we've had past lifetime experiences traumas things like that that come in and affect us very much here in the physical present moment so much of this past life stuff soul aspects another incarnation of your soul throughout time space dimensions realities that has all been affecting us for for eons now recently with the chalice energy coming in we were able to see that we were integrating which we've been slowly integrating through all these years all soul aspects all soul incarnations throughout time and as we are integrating them especially when the chalice came along actually it came with the harmonic creation field trio is when it first started to come in with the regeneration ring but then with the chalice ring it really sped up that we were bringing in our light our light is simply a little particle of us an incarnation somewhere in this universe from our soul our soul that little particle of light that we bring into the human in this here now moment is simply a particle of us in existence so as we are consolidating all of our soul's light right now we are basically dissolving past creations past lives as we are dissolving our past life creations we are also for the most part going through and releasing and clearing all of the programs the belief structures the traumas so that's the work that we've been doing for the past year is the clearing of all lifetimes of stuff but just recently this week um you know there's been a lot of things coming up that it it seems like it's past life stuff that something keeps coming back but we are seeing that there is it's it's almost so how it presented to me when I first saw it with with Brenda with my sister was to me it looked like she was holding something like holding like a a vase or kind of like the Aquarius the water bearer looks you know sitting there holding this vase and out of here actually when I was looking for all that darkness that was around her I could see her trudging through that that darkness and it was just like liquid soot dense sticky um, not really sticky just taints everything so when I followed that darkness that was covering her and was covering some of her clients and some of her other family I could see where that darkness was coming from and it went all the way around to what that was that she was carrying so it's like this soul level structure or program or something that presents in this physical form as you or your soul carrying this infinite vase of this dark stuff that just spews out and comes around and creates our physical well our reality um wild stuff so i'm gonna put my finger on it but here's here's the here's the key to the whole thing is is that it showed me that that structure that being that is holding that case of that that water that that vase that comes around and creates your reality and it is recreating old crap is what this is doing so we've basically integrated in all of our old past lives but there is still something that is creating old crap and that is creating that into our reality so when i started looking at that structure uh we were able to clear brenda's and some others and then for three days i played with this whole damn thing of how do you clear this structure because for me i was still holding on to mine i wasn't ready to let go um 
you know, of course, that's just the way I know a lot of us are, is that we'd rather trudge in the shit than clear it and be happy. Um, you know, it's just kind of the human condition programming for <laughs> for us, for a lot of people. Um, so for me, I was looking at this thing for three days, trying to figure out what it was. I could see that my light, my soul, little particles of flashy little light would come out of this structure. And then when I look at others, I could see their light coming out of the structure. But both of these lights were exactly the same. They were simply energy. They were soul. They weren't consciousness. So it was really wild because I saw all these lights gathering together. And then I was like, okay. But that light, that energy is not creation. It is simply the energy, the malleable form that creation comes from. Creation comes from consciousness. So, very interesting that that water bearer thing, that 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 aspect of us that's holding that vial that um, is just spewing out all this dark stuff. Um, that was basically consciousness it was it's creation it's recreating things in your world so long story sorry you guys this is the first time i've been trying to share this so here's what happens is we then take and unplug our consciousness and our light from that creation from that bearer of old creation patterns because it's a cyclical old creation pattern. We unplug. Then we plug into something new. What this something new is, because this is something that I have struggled with as, okay, if I'm going to step up and be a conscious creator, I don't think I can do that because I don't know from my limited perspective what it is that I want or what is in the highest and best. And also the whole thing of the soul's heart's passion. That's what I want to surrender to and allow to be the creator. I'm just the physical channel. I am the creator. But all of it comes from my higher perspective, my higher consciousness. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to unplug from where we're at. But we're going to plug into what is new if for you is going to be your soul's heart's passion. So I'll walk you through. I walked four of us through it yesterday, and it worked well. So I'm going to try it here today. And we'll just walk through a meditation of finding our soul's heart's passion. It's going to be a big golden heart. It's going to be a sunshine in our world. And then we're going to unplug from that old conscious creation, that old matrix, and we're going to plug into this new. So here we go. People had huge shifts with it yesterday. So let's see what we can do today. All right. So just closing your eyes, going into the heart space, imagining within your physical heart, your light, your soul's fire, going heart to heart with the earth, breathing in that light of the earth into the heart. Going heart to heart with your soul, source, creator, God, however you see and say that. Breathing in that light of creation into the heart. That third breath, you breathe in from both earth and sky. You bring all those lights together with your light within you. You become a column of light that's grounded, connected, and in the heart space. As we're in the sacred space of the heart, and we ask the soul to stand before us. We ask the soul to release any programs and belief structures that may prevent us from doing this unplug and reset. So it's just a trusting and allowing. Um, it is a statement to yourself that I surrender to my soul and I allow all that is in my highest and best. I allow the release of everything that no longer serves me. 
take the breath, allow the soul to do the work. Awesome. Next, we visualize within your physical heart this golden sphere. Maybe it's a golden heart. Maybe it's a golden ball of fire. It contains your soul's light, everything that your soul is throughout all of this universe. Now imagine the soul is going to unplug you from your old creation, from being that bearer of that source of non-beneficial creation, creation that no longer serves. And then your soul plugs that into that giant sun within the heart. That giant sun is your soul's heart. That is your soul's heart's passions. You can imagine if you wish that instead of that being within your chest, that that is out in your physical reality. Let's say that's just the sunshine that you see up there shining. Imagine that within your reality, the sunshine is your golden heart. That is your soul's heart's passions. You're plugged into it. Because if you imagine that that is your world, now start imagining everything else that you see every day. This is all your creation. It is your energy, your consciousness, your creation. Now again, asking your soul to make sure that you're unplugged from the old matrix reality creation. You as that bearer of the old creation, you're unplugged and you're plugged into the new. That simple, and it all happened. It all happened quickly and easily. Um, I'm not going to do any more questions, but if you guys want to give any feedback, you are welcome to bring some feedback here. But um, yeah, it's it's a powerful thing because we have been noticing recently that we've all been recreating just weird crap, stuff that is. We're like, wow, why are we still creating that? Um, Bernard, feel a lot brighter. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's with me too, is that when I first did it and when I did it just now, um, yeah, everything seemed different as I looked out my eyes. Everything was brighter, lighter. Um, cool. So yeah, please keep playing with this because it's huge, you guys. And, and the more of us that can start, keep doing this, keep staying plugged into our soul's heart's passion and not plugged into the old creation because the old creation, it was structures. It was structures of, of everything that kept us in our old soul mission. This is, this is my mission. This is what I was born for. You know, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. We're done with that. So those old things that you were born for, my mission, my thing, is nothing more than being and connecting to your soul's heart's passion because that is what's going to take you forward. You connect into your old, this is my soul mission, and it's going to keep you in the loop, in the circle. Um, so yeah, just keep unplugging and keep your eyes on your big sun, your soul's heart's passion. All right, you guys, thank you for playing and we'll see you next week. Maybe. Oh crap. No, next week we're going to be in, actually next Friday, we're going to be in um, LA area, Bakersfield, California, actually. So I guess I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Maybe we'll do a live from out at the event. So, all right, take care of you guys. Thanks for being here.